and the inspiration with Troy Alexander. I am so excited to be back one more time. We have an amazing guest. Come on, we come to uplift and to encourage you to follow your dreams and never give up on your dreams. Again, our purpose, our motto is dream. Take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Uh, tonight, I'm telling you, I am honored to have this amazing young lady. But before we go there, you can connect with us. We're on Facebook, Troy Alexander. We are on YouTube, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. And we're on Instagram. You know, I love taking pictures at Troy Alexander Photo. And listen, I want to encourage you on this. Your destiny is visible even when nothing is there. But I just want to encourage you that no matter what you see, what you experience, you have to know that you still have destiny. That's why you have to keep going, keep climbing, keep swimming, whatever you have to do, whatever gift and ability that you've been given, keep doing that. And I'm telling you, there's somebody going to see it and say, you know what? Come on, I got you. I'm telling you right now, keep going because it is your destiny, your greatness. There's greatness in you. And I'm excited tonight to share this amazing young lady with us on our broadcast tonight. Listen, she is a professional stylist for 25 years, two-time best-selling author for her chapters in women who inspire and women who illuminate. Listen, she is a conference speaker for women's retreats on anxiety and depression. My goodness, currently working on a coaching program, The Beauty of Healing, Anxiety. I can't wait to talk about that. Listen, a 90-day program to healing anxiety and depression. She's also not, I'm not even through yet, y'all. She is also Mrs. Delaware Valley International 2023, Mrs. Mainline, Pennsylvania, 2022. Let's welcome Mandy Scanlon. How are you, Mandy? Hi, thank you. I'm doing, I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you? I am doing wonderful. I am so humbled and honored to have you. Again, as I said, you are awesome. You're amazing, phenomenal. And I'm just truly, truly inspiring. So my first question, we're going to get to so much about pageantry <laughs> and all that you've done. And But I wanted to ask you first, I so loved your platform. And I saw your platform that talked about the beauty of healing anxiety. How did this platform come about? Well, I, so I've been in the beauty industry for close to 30 years now. So if you, of course, that's the beauty part of it. And I have always, you know, helped people feel beautiful on the outside. And many years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I started suffering with horrible anxiety and depression after I had my children. And through that suffering, I mean, I did get help and, you know, it was a long process. I'm still working on things, but through that and feeling so horrible inside at times and feeling so depressed, I remember thinking to myself, I can't imagine anybody feeling this way and just started feeling like it was my calling to help other people. So throughout the last few years of working on myself and doing different tips, learning tips and reading things and tools and helping myself, I am starting to incorporate them into helping others. So I came up with this program, The Beauty of Healing Anxiety, because my goal is for people to feel beautiful um, on the outside, but for, of course, on the inside, like from the inside out. So help them heal the inside and just feel beautiful from the inside out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so proud of you, all that you've done you. and who you've become and who you're still becoming. It's awesome. It's amazing. And I have to ask you, because through this healing process, like it, 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 it causes you to be very transparent, right? About things that you've experienced and gone through. How did you get the courage to be able to um, keep, keep speaking about that part of your journey? Well, because it is, I, I do, there's a big stigma around mental health, right? Like it's embarrassing. And 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 I felt that way, of course, at first. Um, but for me, and not everyone's like this, but I would share it with my clients. I would, certain ones, like ones that were, some that I were close with, they were, you know, they knew I was struggling. And through that, people started confiding in me of their anxiety or their 
issues or things that they've gone through and their fears and depression and people that were suicidal that I would never have any idea that they were. So I felt through me telling them my story, then they would tell me their story and we were healing each other. And if you don't wow. talk about it there, it's, you know, it's not, you're not going to heal. And, you know, that also helped me discover that I feel that I want to help other people. I don't want people suffering. I want people to live their best life every day and live their purpose and joyful. And you can't do that dealing with fear, anxiety, and depression. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, so, so are you telling me, Mandy, that um, through your professional career as a hairstylist, you would talk to clients, those who you trust, right. and and share your journey. So, mm -hmm. so, so your place, so that that space became a healing place for you. Absolutely, absolutely. I wasn't I wasn't hot where I like didn't go to work and like for me I had to get out. Um, I just had a lot of fearful thoughts constantly going through my head and just constant anxiety, um, things. It would often make me feel sick, but I would go to work where I know some people can't get out of bed, things like that. I wasn't like that, um, but just for me, it was healing to talk about it. And I know not everybody is like that, but that for some reason, talking about it just helped me. And then hearing other people's story and knowing that you're not alone because you do feel like literally you're going crazy inside, like what is happening? And you're just scared. And I also feel like I was looking for someone to help me and people did, don't get me wrong, but I did learn that I had to help myself. Like I went from doctor to doctor to doctor thinking like, this one's gonna heal me. This one's gonna fix me. This one's gonna have the answer. And so, I mean, they were very helpful and so were people. But through that, I also discovered that I was the only one that could really help myself inside and, and heal and help myself heal. Wow, wow. Um, amazing. I, I, I wanted to ask you like, Tell me about the importance of having that safe space. Because again, you talked about sharing your journey with those who are close, who you trusted, and you have to, right? You have to have those that you can really trust, you know, that you can share things with because, because you're being vulnerable, right? And so I, I tell me about the importance of having a safe space. So it's very important. And I do, I knew I had had a couple like clients that were friends. We weren't super close, but you know, like. I, I knew them pretty well that had also suffered what, you know, they had told me in the past by mentioning a few things. And at that point I didn't even have kids. I would just listen do their hair. I'm like, Oh, that stinks. You know what I mean? Like I would just listen to them and try to talk to them a little bit about it. My mom had suffered from anxiety when I was in high school. So it's almost, I learned a lot about it then through her, um, through her healing journey. And also had clients that had had a lot of panic issues. I had actually went, years ago in an ambulance with a, one of my clients couldn't breathe. We didn't really know it was wrong. It totally was a panic attack. I went to the hospital with her. So I just feel like these, like I've had those clients drawn to me often, but I didn't realize that at the time what it was until I started suffering. And I feel like if someone isn't or hasn't gone through anxiety and panic and some type of issues like that, they don't understand it at all. So having that safe space of knowing someone went through it also and sharing like what I was going through with them was so important because my husband was a wonderful support, but he doesn't deal with the anxiety. So he had a very hard time understanding like what is wrong with you? You know, <laughs> why if you have a great life, you have like, why, what is happening? So, and I, I think until someone experiences it, God forbid, it's very hard to understand. Right, well, I, I first of all, I can't even imagine, well, I actually, I can't imagine because I've gone through some things in my life too where, where fear really controlled my life. Um, but, but I wanted to ask you, how, how have you learned? Because I know it's an evolution, right? It's an ongoing process. How have you learned to cope? Like what, what, what helps you in those moments when you kind of feel like, you know what? Okay, I kind of feel something or I, I sense something. What helps you? So as soon as I feel that thought, and this is part of my anxiety is um, feeling sick to my stomach, believe it or not, is like, and then I'm like instantly, oh my God, I'm getting sick. That was always a trigger for me, especially when my kids were babies. I choose again, I choose a different thought. 
which took me a long time to do, but I recognize it now after years of work and set like, you know, and then start telling myself affirmations. You're okay. You are safe. You, you, I have affirmations come up on my phone daily. I set reminders where every morning it comes up. You are like, for me, that always worked for me. You are okay. And you are safe was enough or whatever, you know, whatever it may be is an amazing thing to put on your phone. But also I did get into a routine and I do fall out of it sometimes, but getting up early, you know, before my family ever, every morning and just listening to something inspirational, whether it be a podcast, a quick, even like a five minute meditation, I just put my headphones in, listen, just to like raise my vibration in the morning. I journal a lot. Um, EFT tapping has really, really helped me a lot. I don't know if you've ever used it, but it helps um, shift the energy in your body. So if I'm really feeling down and sick, I will do that a little bit. And it will, you know, if you go from like a scale of one to 10, it instantly makes you feel better, whatever it is that's bothering you. So that's, that's just a couple of the things I do. <laughs> well, listen, um, you, have, you are helping so many. And so many prior to now, even this live, those that will watch this now or watch it at a later time, just to hear you and to see you and talk about your experiences, it is so empowering. Well, thank you so much thank for sharing. You. So I have to ask you, was there ever a moment or, or a moment where you felt like you weren't going to get out of it or, won't, or, or weren't going to overcome it or be able to move forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would go to therapy and, you know, they would be like, well, what would happen if this happened? Like whatever my fear was at that time. And I just couldn't like wrap my head around it. Like, what do they mean? You know, like I had a fear of dying. I had a fear. Of, I, I don't even know, like so many fearful things going through my head, fearful of things happening to my children. Um, and I truly thought, yeah, I wasn't sure. There were days where I would get in my car and just drive and not know where I was going, but I felt like I wanted it to end. And I like, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was 100% suicidal, but when I hear stories of suicide and like lately there's been stuff with celebrities and things like that. And I hear people say, like, it just doesn't make sense. And I say to them, look, I wasn't 100% there, but I was probably at least three quarters of the way there. And it's so hard to understand. It's so hard to explain the feeling inside that you want to end, that if you didn't fe feel, you'll never understand it. So there were times where I wasn't sure, like I just wasn't sure, but thank God, I know I have angels with me. I've had people tell me all the time, they let me realize that it took me seven years to have my first child, my daughter, who's 14 now, um, that they needed me. And like, I was here for a reason and I was here for a purpose. And I truly feel my purpose is to help others. And I think if anybody is suffering, that's something I want them to do is to like, I want to help them to find their purpose also once they heal. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> wonderful. And I'm going to, I'm going to add on to, um, to that, that cheering section. I need you, Mandy. <laughs> we need you, Mandy. Yes, we do, because I'm telling you, your story is so powerful. And as I said, and I'll say it again, whatever I can do to be a support, because oh. it is so important that that message gets out. And as you said, people don't understand. And if you have people in your world, in your space, who don't understand, it makes it even harder. Um, so I'm just so grateful that you were, that you're here, that you're continuing that you're advocating and you're elevating your voice. So thank you. Thank you so much I'm honored for that. To be here. <laughs> it means, no, it means everything. So I want to just ask, I saw this post um, that, that you had and it says, do things that make you uncomfortable. Yes. It's the only way to grow, <laughs> right? And I wanted to say like, can you share with us um, some things that like were uncomfortable for you at one point, but now you've kind of gotten to the point where you know what, it still might be, but I don't know, but but you've overcome it to some degree where you're able to go forward. Can you share with us and then just share your thoughts about the, 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 the actual quote itself? So something like this 
um, even <laughs> up until today. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's something uncomfortable. Speaking, right. um, I have a dream. I have it on my vision board over here about speaking, but yet the thought of it, I could like crawl under the desk and hide. But like, and you know, so I've just been doing it, trying to do it. Um, I'm speaking tomorrow night, actually at a school in Tom's River to a bunch of children and their parents. It's my first like real paid speaking gig. So I am like over the moon excited about that. Um, so that definitely is something that I have overcome. I was very shy as a kid. And it's it's pretty funny because um, I recently did a pageant that, you know, we had taught that that's definitely what that post was about, I believe, was the pageant. And I had my old boss, who was the first salon that I ever worked at. I've only worked at two. That was the first one when I was 18 years old. I started there. And she actually wrote on my, um, I think I wrote something about my interview at the pageant. And she read, oh, my goodness we had to give you things to say to clients because you wouldn't talk to them. You were so shy, like almost, you know, 25, 28 years ago and look at you now. So it was just so funny because I wasn't like this. Um, I've grown into this, I think, with what I went through and just wanting to be a voice for people and um, it as uncomfortable as it is and you think that people are judgmental of you. And I know people are of me and, you know, and that goes into the uncomfortableness. Um, we're here for a reason and we have a job to do and, you know, we got to do it. You got to get uncomfortable to grow. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So that's, you know, one of my, as, as I wrote and, it, and it's very true. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> well, all Thank I can you. say, Mandy, is get ready because I am sure you're going to be getting a whole lot more invitations come out to speak paid yes <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, and and it's it's wonderful so i'm i'm just looking forward to your worldwide tour of just going <laughs> around and inspiring the world um and, and go just together <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it so I, I i am just so in in all of you and, and you talked about pageantry right yeah. and so i got to ask you when did you start pageantry? Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like it was kind of like not too long ago. Not too long ago, just last year. So uh, one of my good friends was Mrs. Pennsylvania for America 2021. And I went to her, they do a going away party because when you win, you go to not each state goes to a nationals. So I went to her party for nationals and I met the woman who ran the pageant and she's like, oh, you know, I would love for you to be in my next pageant. And I was like, I've never been in a pageant. I've never been on a stage. I don't have a talent. Yeah, you know, all these things. I'm not from Pennsylvania. So anyway, I got talked into it. You didn't need a talent, thank goodness, or I probably would not have been in it. And um, <laughs> and I did it. I knew nothing about it. I didn't hire a coach almost, you know, a lot of the girls in it had prior pageantry experience and I did horrible, absolutely horrible. <laughs> and I did really bad in the interview. And I was, I was upset about it. Cause I thought to myself, I know I can do better than this. Like I've been working on this for years. So I, that was over with, that was last May. And once you're in one pageant, people reach out to you and things. And I had some people from New Jersey reaching out to me and I had come in contact with um, the director of Mrs. New Jersey international pageant. So I, I said to her, and it's so funny because I think about this now, I put this out there. I said, I'm just doing this because I want to do better on my interview. I said, I don't care about winning. So to make a long story short, that pageant was just a month ago. I did not win, but I did come in second place in interview. So I knew I did amazing in interview. Um, and it's just amazing what you put out there. Like, why did I say, I don't want to win because now if I ever do one, I haven't 100% decided it would 100,000% be to win. <laughs> and I know what I need to practice on stage. I need to practice walking and all of those things. And I still am not, you know, a pageant girl with experience. Every girl I went against has been a prior queen. So it was, it, but it's an amazing experience. These women are unbelievable. I met the most unbelievable women this year in the pageant I was in. So just for that alone, it was worth it. Um, and I love it for getting my platform out there. Wow. Listen, <laughs> all I know is you're telling me, oh, well, last year, year <laughs> and a half ago, you know, I went to a friend and I listen, all I know, Mandy, is I said earlier, destiny 
is your destiny. And even if it, there's nothing there, no pageant coach, no history, <laughs> first time ever, right? Not, so all I'm saying is when you have a purpose, all I know is all it needs you to do is step out there. When right. you have purpose, all it requires, not all, but the main thing is Amen. for you to step into it. And I'm telling you, doors will open. So all I know is, <laughs> listen, thank goodness for your friends having a party. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. It's just so wild. You know, I mean, I did say to some of my friends, like, because it's very, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. But as soon as it's over, you're like, oh, maybe I'll do another one. Because that was, right, a, lot of, right. was a lot of fun. And, you know, it's, right. I love getting dressed up as you see all my clothes in the background and getting hair and makeup. And, but it's so much more than that. And that's a whole nother thing. Like, until you experience it, I actually judged a pageant here in New Jersey. It was um, in 2019. It was Mrs. New Jersey, or I'm sorry, Miss New Jersey's Outstanding Teen. And I was asked to judge this and I thought, okay, you know, I didn't know anything a whole lot about pageants. Um, and these girls were cheering each other on. It wasn't what you think of in pageantry at all. Um, it was, these were, they were like, you know, 16, 17, 15 years old, and they were loving on each other and cheering each other on. And I was like, oh my gosh. And, you know, <laughs> still never thinking I'd be in one, but it was, it, it, it's a pretty cool world. Wow. And listen, I got to ask you again, you, you're, you, we're talking about anxiety. You're talking about fear. Tell me what, what, what was that even like for you to even conceive? I'm going to go on stage here, right? I'm going to, out of all that I've dealt with, I'm going to go on the, the biggest stage, right? And, and that there can be and make myself visible and vulnerable to the judges and the audience and all. what was that like? Oh, nerve wracking. And I'm on stage. I'm very nervous. And it is funny because even at rehearsals, some of the people watching and all were like, you got to loosen up your hands because I think I'm like, ah, you know, <laughs> so but I do think it's like one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get. So for me, my first time was last year, I got up there and was like, probably like a deer in headlights. Um, this year was a little better. So I think if I keep doing it, um, and, and, you know, not many people ever go out their first time and win. It does take a lot of consistency, a lot of practice. Um, so it was, I was very, very nervous, <laughs> to say the least, very nervous. <laughs> wow. We're so proud of you. We Thank are you. So, Thank you. so proud of you. And I, you I'm just, so much. I, I'm, I, I love your strength. I love your courage. I love your, your ability to, to go back again, right? Because even after the first interview, you said, you know what? I can do better, mm -hmm. right? And I always encourage, you need something that's in front of you for you to aspire to, right? That keeps us within our lane, that keeps us focused. And I love that because some people are like, you know what? Oh, I didn't do good. I, you know, maybe it's not for me. But I love the fact you went back again. And that right there, Mandy, is encouraging so many. Okay, but you know what? Go back again. Yes, you can do this. So thank you for going back again. Thank <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's very oh, true. Once yes. you fall, you got to get back up, right? As we said, uh, we were talking earlier. It's so true. I mean, I fell and I did a little better this time. And each time, hopefully, if I do more, it'll yes. get better and better. <laughs> well, all I can say is, whether the crown, whether they call your name or not, you are a winner, Mandy. Just Thanks. the fact that you went back again and said, I'm doing this, right? This is for me. I know I can do better, not comparing. You know what? You win. Like, that is a crown for you. And I am so proud of you. Again, I, I'm going to keep Thank saying it. Thank you so much. I'm so very proud of you. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I, I, I saw... um <laughs> I saw <this. laughs> I saw this uh, post as well, and you said, we have the power to heal. And I, I, was, I was inspired by that, right? Because knowing that you have the power to heal, that there is a healing um, process and there's a healing place that mm -hmm. we can get to. So my question for you is, um, what, what helps you to remember that a part that along your journey, right? Because sometimes we, we feel a moment, we feel inspired, we feel encouraged, and then we go through another sort of part of our journey in life. And 
we can tend to forget the things that we've learned or things that we were trained or things that we, because the moment can become such overwhelming. What helps, how do you help to remember the fact that you have the power to heal? So it does get tough at times. I mean, life can be so challenging in so many ways and stressful and all the things. And I go through the motions like everybody else, but just coming back to mindfulness, just remind you of what I want to be, you know, like in those moments when you might like, you know, have a freak out moment on your kids or whatever, the dogs, whatever's bothering you or somebody stresses you out at work. Um, once I, you know, get out of that moment and do like choose again, try to rethink my thoughts before it comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Sometimes I just go, if I'm at work, I can go into the bathroom, like a quiet space. If I'm at home, I come into like my private space and just sit quietly for a few minutes and just practicing that mindfulness and even like just journaling of whatever's bothering you is an amazing way of getting it out and getting it out of your body. I've written things and burn it even just to like get rid of it, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. <laughs> That's a great way of getting the bad feeling out of you and raising your vibration, just like spit it all out. If somebody's bothering you, but you don't want to like, you know, freak out on them or whatever, it's a great to just write it down, burn it or sit, meditate um, and just get your, your energy back to where you want to be. Wow. <laughs> well, listen, I, 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 it's one thing to, to say it. It's one thing to write it down. Please, yes. how did you get to the point where you are a two-time best-selling author <laughs> for your chapters, right? In the women yes. who inspire and women who illuminate. So now it's like, it's there. It's, it's been memorialized forever. How mm -hmm. did you get to a place to actually pen, you know, those words? And what did you want those words to do to those who read them? So the first chapter that I wrote was in um, Women Who Inspire, and that was my story of what I believe pretty much got me to the anxiety. Um, and I wrote about it, like I wrote about the backstory and I wrote about what it felt like the anxiety, that type of thing. So for that, I wanted women to know they're not alone for whatever they've gone through. I went through an abusive relationship many, many years ago, which I think actually brought me to that point. But then I went through infertility for years to have my kids um, with my husband. And I think after I did have both of them and all the, all the hormones I put in my body for all those years and um, fear, just it, it all just came crashing down at once, basically. So that was that story. So I wanted people to know my story and how I got there and to know they're not alone. And then in Women Who Illuminate, my chapter was about my healing process and all the things that I learned to help myself. And even at that point, and as I say, even now, it is always a journey. It's always a struggle. I'm not saying, I would never say I'm anxiety free or stress because, you know, it's, it's there. It's just something, it's a struggle every day. I have, you know, said many times, I almost feel like anxiety, I describe it almost as like an alcoholic, right? A recovering alcoholic is recovering from that need to drink every day. It's a struggle. Yep. And it, anxiety and fear, oftentimes you're recovering from bad thoughts, scary thoughts, fearful thoughts, because that's all that it is. It's all fear-based thoughts causing that anxiety in our bodies. So it's a struggle every day. It's, to, and it's so much easier to believe the bad thoughts you know, like even um, yeah. with body image, that's another thing I love to like help people with is body image and things like that. I struggled with it my whole life, to be honest, you know, you never think you're thin enough, whatever. And it's so much easier to tell yourself you're ugly rather than say you're beautiful. It's just for some reason, our brains are wired to think the bad. So it's, it's a, it's a long process. And I would hope that just me by writing those chapters, inspire people to get help, um, you know, use the tips and tools that helped me and just know that they're here for a reason and they have the power to heal. We all have the power to heal. It's just, it's just another job to work on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, all I can say is you, you are such a light of inspiration and I'm honored uh, that you agreed to be on our broadcast. I have uh, been so inspired by your posts, so inspired by your words, so inspired by you. 
And I'm so just just honored again to have you. I want to ask you, um, you 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 said you have two two children, correct? Yes. What 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 do you hope they they can learn from you or or they can inspire from you? So I one another reason that I do the pageants is, and especially for my daughter who's 14 at the toughest age to know, and my son who is 10 and my son suffers from anxiety. So that's a work every day too, working with him. Um, I want them to know that they have the power to do anything they put their mind to, anything, anything they put their mind to, they can do. And that's, so I just hope that they have the courage to to know that that's all that I want is them to, I tell them every day to be kind and smile because smiling gets you through hard times too. <laughs> and um, just know that you can do whatever you want to do. So that, that's my hope for them. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> well, listen, I'm in their cheering section too. So oh, whatever, whatever I can you. do to be a support to them, uh, definitely, you know, because it's this is an evolution. It's an ongoing process, mm -hmm. right? And as I shared before us before the pre show I spoke about, and I had a hard time speaking. I stuttered horribly as a child and growing up, so it wasn't a fun experience through elementary school and junior high and and some parts of high school as well. But but it's about being determined and having those people around you. Having right. those voices that are telling you, you can do this. Hold on. Be encouraged. You got this. You're not in this by yourself. And that's what I heard, heard you say, Mandy, which I think is so powerful, that people can know you're not in this by yourself. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you so thank much. You're thank you. Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you again, um, you know, you, you've done so much. And <laughs> again, you're, you're a professional stylist. You're just amazing. You're just multi-talented, you're just amazing. And you talked about how, again, it was therapeutic for you to be able to share with your clients. Um, what, what, do you have a vision for this 90-day uh, plan? Do you envision this, this online, in-person, worldwide? What are your, uh, what's on your vision board for, for what it is that you wanna do? For, the, for my 90 day program. Yes, so I'm still working yes. on it. Um, my, I envision, so uh, it takes, they say scientifically proven, it takes 90 days to rewire your brain. So wow. 90 days of positive thoughts and affirmations and tools and just, or self care, constantly do it. So I want my client to do 90 days and it'll be, you know, something I instruct them to do or whichever. Um, every day to help themselves and, in, you know, incorporate it into their everyday life. And hopefully within those 90 days, start to heal themselves. I mean, I'm not a doctor or I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like that. These are just things that we can do for ourselves through the EFT tapping, the uh, meditations, affirmations. There's so much, you know, a vis um, visioning different like visioning yourself better and visioning yourself in whatever you feel that your purpose is. So I envision for that, like, yes, I would love to have, you know, many, many clients for that, it's going around the world, speaking for it um, and, and just inspiring people and helping them. Our world is in a scary place at times. And I just feel like any type of positivity is helpful to any, to everyone. Everybody needs it every day. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> tell us I, again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Where, where, if, if somebody wants to get their hair done by you, where do they go? So I work at a salon here in New Jersey in my hometown, Mickleton. It's called John Anthony Salon and that's on Instagram and they can find that on my page also, which is um, at Mandy underscore Scanlon and it'd have the link for John Anthony's on there. <laughs> All I can say is I've I've never heard of, you know what? You can get your hair done and <laughs> also have 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 a safe space to to be encouraged if you're dealing with anxiety or dealing with any kind of issue to just I and so listen, I, I just get ready. Um John Anthony, right? That's what it's called. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> John Anthony, get get ready for the right. overflow because what I know is what makes a difference. Is people, right? Mm -hmm. 
you can be skilled, but if you don't have that ability to interact with people and make them feel comfortable yes. and safe, um, but when you do, people will come to you and they'll wait for you. All I know is, I don't know what your waiting list is now, but <laughs> just get ready because you're going to have one. Thank you. So, Thank you. Absolutely. I hope so. Thank you. Absolutely. So again, um, is there more that you, again, you've done pageantry. Oh my goodness. And I'm, 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 I'm not sure if I want to even ask because whatever you seem to do, you do very well. Uh, <laughs> but is there anything else that you do from pageantry, styling? Um, again, you're getting ready for this 90 day amazing healing journey. Um, is there more that you do? Do you sing? Or that's why you don't have talent. <laughs> I do not <laughs> sing. No, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> I don't have a yeah. talent. <laughs> I don't dance. I don't sing. <laughs> well, listen, um, all I know is, um, is, is there more that you want to share with us about your journey? Because again, I could probably talk to you like oh, ongoing, but um, is there more that you want to share with us that we haven't talked? What else is on your vision board? If there's anything else on your vision board. Oh, that you're able to share. You know what's on my vision board? It's kind of, it's kind of funny. Um, I would love to be a yoga teacher someday. I've always wanted to do that. I don't know why. Someday. We'll see. Um, okay. But my vision board's up there. That's why I'm looking. I'm like, what's up there? Um, yeah, I, I, I think definitely more speaking. I like it just feels so good to speak and help others and tell your story. Like that's definitely something that I want more of in the future. Um, but as for if anybody wants to reach out to me, if anybody is suffering, please message me. I do have a website. It's mandyscanlon.net, but it is under construction. We're like re we're going to get the package for my program and all on there and getting some new pictures up and things like that. So if you go on, it will be like, I think you can go on and look at it, but it's a lot, it's pretty like outdated with the pictures and things like that. So, but, um, they can always message me through it. Wow. So that, yeah, or even they can message me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm just Mandy Medilly Scanlon on um, Facebook. So if anybody needs anything, reach out. I, if you're suffering, please don't hesitate because I am there for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so all I can say is get ready because you're going to be invited. You're going to be asked. People are going to reach out to you even the more and whatever place that I can have in that journey to elevate you and elevate your voice and your journey and your healing process and your healing testimony and all of that. Please just know that I'm here to be a support to you. I think you are just, and there are people who are inspiring that you don't even know, right? So again, this is the first time we've ever like talked, right? So, right. <laughs> but, 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 but I reached out because you are, you have been inspiring for, for so long. And I just want you to know that you matter. You oh. are making a difference despite how many emails you may or may not get, how many comments you may or may not get at all. People see and they Absolutely. are being inspired by you. I don't want to get emotional, but they <laughs> are truly being inspired by you. So please, despite whatever you see or don't see, keep doing what you're doing. You are an amazing gift to the world. And we thank you so much. So I got to ask you that um, for, for, for those who may not be able to see their dreams right now like like they don't quite well first of all before i even go there i love the fact that you have your vision board right where you are that is <laughs> like like i've heard people have them but like don't know where they are they, did the, <laughs> they went to a vision board party they did it but don't know where yeah. it is right but i love the fact you have it on your wall you looked at it and that moment right there mandy was powerful because it said to people put it in the line of sight let it be in your vision. Every day when you walk up, when you wake up and you walk in your house or wherever it is, keep looking at it and let that be the vision to your path. So first of all, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, so I did want to ask you again, for those who, who haven't seen their dreams or don't see them happening or, or coming to pass, what would you say to them to encourage them to hold on to their dreams? Just to keep dreaming, keep dreaming, because I... I think I have to go back and look at pictures, but I think it was 2018, possibly, maybe even 2017, was the first time I was ever asked to speak. And it was at a local women's club in like the town next door to where I live. And it was after I wrote um, In Women Who Illuminate. 
And I got paid for that. It was a very low amount, which was totally, totally fine. But I remember someone, my friend who um, speaks a lot and things like that saying to me, this is just the beginning. You know, this is just the beginning. And I thought, oh, okay. You know, like you just never know, right? And here I am, it's been all these years, but we did have a little bit of a blockage with COVID and things like that. For a couple of years, we literally lost time with meeting with people and things like that, being in schools. Um, and here I am, you know, we got past all of that and now I'm doing it tomorrow night. So it may not be tomorrow because I definitely am a person who wants things yesterday. I, you know, I've always been like that, but I'm learning to take a deep breath and slow down. And when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and it will happen. It will come, it'll come true. <laughs> so keep dreaming. Yes, will. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So listen, you need to, um, th there, there are so many associations out there. Yeah. There is this, State of New Jersey in terms of mental health association and and so but you need to put yourself out there as a speaker because I'm telling you there are so many conferences that the state puts on the county puts on different groups put on and they need to know that hey Mandy Scanlon is on the list so please thank you yes and, I would yeah. love to I got to learn about that yes thank you yes. yes so so we'll talk more offline, okay oh thank I, you yes I would love that sure that I get you the information about all those associations and the counties and so forth because they're always having conferences on different issues and topics and you definitely need to be a part of them definitely, love definitely. That. yes oh so, thank you thank you absolutely. thank you that's amazing absolutely so is there more you want to share with us before I give you the final word um no I think that's it uh, thank you so much I just want to thank you and tell you you are an inspiration to everybody I see your posts every day your pictures are beyond beautiful I cannot wait to have a photo shoot with you they're just amazing you are an artist true and true and you're an inspiration so thank you I was honored when you asked me to be on here so I cannot oh. thank you enough well thank you so much Mandy again I so appreciate you everyone again Please, let's applaud Mandy Scanlon. <laughs> Thank so you. We're so proud of you, Mandy. Again, you are truly a light of inspiration. Continue, continue. If you ever need any words, just call me. Say, Troy, I, I got you. Because I'm telling <laughs> Thank you, you. Thank I, you. Thank I, I, I won't be surprised what you do next, whether that's another book, whether that's another uh, conference that you're going to be at and you're advertising. But I'm definitely going to give you that information. And I think, you know what? Um, yeah, I, there, I'm, I'm excited. I, I can't wait <laughs> to, see, <laughs> to see what comes next for you because I thank know there you. is something thank coming you. next for you. So thank you so much, Mandy. I appreciate you. And again, everybody, please, let's applaud Mandy. Thank Stella. you. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you so much. So again, everybody. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to my producer. Uh, somebody wants to know the uh, name of the salon. Again. Oh, John Anthony Salon in Mickleton, New Jersey. Okay, and and give us your contact information. How can people how can people connect with you again? So on Facebook, I am Mandy Medilli Scanlon S C A N L O N. Um, it has my maiden name in there, and on Instagram, it is at Mandy underscore Scanlon, and my website is MandyScanlon.net. So like I said, that's a little wonky right now, but um, I do have some old blog posts and things on there that you can read. So. Awesome. See, I'm not seeing the comment, but but our producer yes, can see this. <laughs> oh, good, good. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm excited for you and what's coming next. I can't wait to get your autograph and a selfie with you one day. So, but yes, maybe doing the photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have books for you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Wonderful. So everyone, again, let's again applaud Mandy <laughs> Scanlon. Thank, Thank you so much, you. Mandy. Again, everybody, this is Inspiration with Troy Alexander. We come to uplift and to encourage you. And you know our motto, dream, take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And I'm telling you right now, Mandy, get ready for a waiting list. Get ready to go on a, a tour. <laughs> All the good news are coming. Thank you. So continue. And thank you so much. We're honored to have you continue to be the wonderful, amazing, beautiful, uplifting, inspiring gift to the world. We're so grateful for you. Thank you so much, Mandy. Have a you. good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.